All right, guys, today is the day that I finally get to start the engine rebuild on the backhoe. But first, let me give you a little backstory on the backhoe, the backhoe backstory. All right, guys, this is a Massey Ferguson 50A. I picked it up from this very nice fellow out in Idaho. He had it listed for $3,000, and that was because it has two giant problems. First of all, the engine is not running very well. It is running. He was able to start it up and then actually get it loaded up on the trailer, where we did have a giant issue because I had a 2-inch ball when I should have had a 2 and 5 16 ball. Luckily, he lent me his 2 and 5 16 to get me home. The other issue is that it has a hydraulic pump shaft split between the engine and transmission. It actually got really sloppy on the gears. They don't mesh together anymore, so the hydraulic pump isn't working. So we've got to get the hydraulic pump working, and then we have to get this engine rebuilt. He did have the engine rebuilt kit that had all new pistons and cylinders. The problem is that was a little bit outside his skill level, and that's why he was selling it so cheap. So let's get this thing fired up and into the shop so we can start this engine rebuild. All right, guys, so here is a good look at the significant blow-by that is uh, necessitating this engine rebuild. This thing was just about as smoky as it could be while still being able to run. Now, unfortunately, I do have to remove the entire front end in order to get to this engine because the engine is structural for the tractor, which is pretty common on heavy equipment like this. Anytime I remove hydraulic lines, I cap them immediately afterwards just to keep from making too much of a mess and to prevent any dirt from contaminating the system later. Alright, time to start on the front end by removing our hydraulic cooler. Up next we've got our cast iron top plate that was very heavy. Now I'm using a torque multiplier here, basically this is a 58 to 1 gear reduction unit, so 58 turns on the outside actually creates one turn on the inside. It's used mostly on like big rig tires and things like that, but works perfectly on heavy equipment like this. I'll put a link for it in the description. I got it on Amazon. I think it was around 150 bucks maybe. Another super heavy piece of steel. So this front plate that is on the crankshaft here, this has a left-handed thread shaft that slides all the way through the front axle housing there, and then it goes to the hydraulic pump on the front. Here we've got our water pump, our water outlet, and our thermostat. So this beefy cast iron piece that houses the front axle bolts directly to the oil pan, which is also made out of cast iron, which is how the engine is able to be structural for the frame.
There's our power steering cooler. And then I'm using the cherry picker in order to lift that front end. I'm not sure how heavy it was, but I knew it was heavier than I could lift. So I'm using a couple of saw horses to set this axle down on so that I can get it all pressure washed and then painted. More hydraulic lines. All right, now we're at the front of the engine. We've got a little tube there that is venting for the crankcase. We've got our water pump and then here is our alternator. There is the crank pulley. Now this is not pressed on, but I did have to use my puller because somebody had put some silicone on there at some point. Next up is removing the starter. Now I'm just removing all of the bolts that mate the engine to the transmission. So when you put an engine and a transmission together, that is called the marriage. So when you remove an engine from a transmission, that is called the divorce. Up next is removing the torque converter. I did mark it before I removed it so that it can go back in the exact same location. All right, now the real fun begins. We get to get this engine tore completely down. First off is the exhaust manifold, and now I am removing all of the fuel lines. This is for the injection pump. Next up is for the individual injectors. There goes our power steering pump. Up next is the front cover, and if you notice the oil fill cover on the right there, that is removable on its own, and that is so that you can reset the timing on the injector pump if you ever have to replace that. The way you set the timing is that each timing gear has a mark, so you have to just make sure that they are all lined up perfectly. First off is the injection pump gear, then you have two idlers in the middle. The camshaft is in the top left and then the crankshaft is in the bottom. There are two gears below that, an idler gear followed by an oil pump gear. Next up is removing the intake manifold. There is a small oil crossover tube below that. Next up is the fuel pump and then the injection pump on the other side. Next up is removing the cylinder head, and you do that by starting with the valve covers. And then after that, we've got our valve train here. You can see our rocker arm assembly. There is a oil passage tube on the bottom there. And then after that, I like to do it in stages. You see I'm going from the inside out so that there isn't any binding during the removal process. Next up are the head bolts. Now these might come out as studs or just the nuts. In my case, most of them came off as just the nuts, so the studs stayed on there, which made the cylinder head a little bit difficult to remove. So I just used some pieces of wood and then some plastic shims, basically anything that was non-marring so that I could finally wiggle that head off. All right, guys, well, the good news on the cylinder head here, it looks like it is in fantastic shape. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for the engine block. I did find an enormous problem. You see we have a giant crack right on the side of the block here. Let me get my little flashlight in so I can show you guys, see how it goes all the way through our coolant channel. 
Let's try through this one here. Yeah, <laughs> obviously we're seeing a bunch of light. Now when I was doing the pressure washing, I did notice this little crack right here. I was planning on simply brazing it because this was holding pressure just fine on our coolant side. But then there's also a very small crack that goes up to the freeze plug. And then another one, let me get some light on it right here, that heads down. So if this were an easy engine to remove, what I would probably do is I would probably weld right up here all the way through. I'd have to cut a groove into the channel, obviously get the cast iron super hot, but then I probably could weld that and then same thing here, weld down here and then either braze or weld right here and then put it back together. This engine is very difficult to remove. As you saw, we had to remove the entire front end of the tractor. There's no guaranteeing that that would last, so that's not like a great idea anyways. And what I would have to do is have this hole machined so that I could fit a new freeze plug in here. And then where the weld is on the top, I would have to have that machined down. Now the company that does my cylinder head servicing here in Spokane, they don't do engine blocks. So I would have to take it to Castle Engines, the guys that rebuilt the 454, if you guys saw that in my pizza truck build, and have them resurface this. Uh, that is probably three months out, so it's not a good plan. Uh, even it's not a good plan for any reasons. It's not a good plan because it probably wouldn't hold and even if it did it would probably take Three months to have them be able to resurface it clean it all up and uh, I just don't have that time So let's go over what our options are now that we know the block is bad All right guys, so if you've been following along with this channel for any amount of time You would know that I absolutely love buying broken pieces of equipment I bought a broken forklift, before that another broken forklift, my personal vehicle, the Cummins Ram, that was salvaged. I bought that on Christmas Eve, sight unseen. The truck that I had before that was also salvaged. Basically, I just can't help myself from buying broken pieces of equipment. So I've been in this situation numerous times. Normally, when I find myself with a bad engine, I will go online and I will try and find another vehicle, in this case a tractor, that has a good engine, but something else is very wrong with it. Either it's missing a bunch of components, it's been in a rollover, or the transmission's bad. So I can show up, start it up, find out that the engine's good, great, don't care about anything else, get it to the shop, pull the engine, swap it out, and then I'll scrap all the rest. Usually it ends up being about cost neutral because the scrap prices and the little parts that I can save will end up paying for the underpriced vehicle because it sells cheap because it's only a working engine. That's not going to work for us in this circumstance. The closest thing that I could find online was a similar engine. It's not identical. It's like one model different, so I'm not sure if everything will fit. It was $4,000 because everything else was working on it. It had a good transmission and it's basically just a little tractor with no backhoe and no front bucket. So that's cost prohibitive. The second thing that I would normally do is take just the bad component, in this case our short block, and then try and source out another short block. The closest thing I found was in Iowa. They want $1,100 for it, which again is just too much money because once I get it in, I'll still have to take it to the machine shop. And again, they're about three months out. So that's not going to work for us. So what I'm going to do is scrap the entire project. Now, <laughs> there's a principle in economics called the sunken cost fallacy. For those of you who aren't familiar with that, you've probably been in that situation where basically you put a whole bunch of money into something, in this case a vehicle, and then you end up at a bad point like this where you have to put in a bunch more and you go, well, I don't want to lose all the money I've put in, so I guess I'm just going to have to keep putting in money. And that is not what you are supposed to do. What you are supposed to do is just accept that loss and move on. But I think we can make this where it's not going to be a loss. Basically, I have $3,400 into the backhoe, and then I also bought a few other things. I bought a new hydraulic pump, a new water pump, things like that that I was planning on obviously repairing. Most of the new stuff I can return and I'll only be out the shipping. And then a lot of these parts will be able to be resold. For instance, this cylinder head, I can take it to the cylinder head shop. I can have them clean it all up, resurface it, make sure all the valves are good and then wrap it up. And then I can post that on eBay. And I was looking at the prices, that's about $800 right there. There's also some components inside the engine like the balancer on the bottom, the timing gears, the injection pump, the front cover, the power steering pump, a lot of good stuff. And when I started to add it up, it was coming out to at least the amount of the vehicle, maybe even a little bit more. Now the transmission on that backhoe was working absolutely perfectly and it is a relatively rare transmission. So I hope that if I can get that taken apart, verify everything on it is good, I can list that and then pallet it so that it can be shipped anywhere in the country. So basically we might be able to come out on top or at least just lose a very small amount of money. 
So that is going to be in the next episode. I'll strip down the entire backhoe. We'll start to itemize the parts. I'll show you guys basically how to dig yourself out from this type of a situation that uh, if you buy broken equipment, you will eventually get yourself into. So unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to rebuild this engine. I really wanted to show that to you guys because it is so interesting, but I will dig into this a little bit more because there's a giant balancer on the bottom that's really cool. And then this has uh, dry sleeves that are actually pressed into the engine block. Uh, that would have been really cool to do the rebuild on, but I can still show you guys that during the disassembly. So thanks for making it this far. I really appreciate it. Stay tuned for the next episode. Should be a lot of fun. You guys will get to watch me dig myself out of the mess that I found myself in. So take care. See you guys later. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.